Growing up, I grew very used to seeing Dora the Explorer on my TV screen. She was usually the last thing I saw before I went to school every day, so she always carried this sense of dread and foreboding, but I didn't mind the show itself. I wasn't super into it like I was with Spongebob or, say, The Fairly Odd Parents, but I'd occasionally watch it when I could catch it. Mostly because Nick Jr. overtook Nickelodeon every morning and I couldn't watch the stuff I especially liked. Except Backyardigans, that show was awesome. Given its popularity, Dora the Explorer received a ton of marketing in many different forms. To this day, the title character remains an icon for children everywhere and the show is super recognizable. So it should come as no surprise that it received a decent amount of video games. Sure, there were ones on her website and a few console ones here and there, but today we're going to look at the ones made by a company we've grown rather familiar with on this channel. We're going to look at the 3D Groove Dora games. 3D Groove made a lot of games for many different franchises. You might recognize them for their masterpieces such as Pringles Super Spud Boxing or SpongeBob Saves the Krusty Krab. Their games weren't exactly of the highest quality, and to be perfectly honest, they often reflected the bare minimum amount of effort. For some reason, Dora was one of their favorite franchises to make games for. They made five different games based on the series, which was a lot by their standards. They only made three SpongeBob games. So let's take a look at them and see how they hold up all these years later. Let's start with Dora's 3D Soccer. And for the sake of everyone watching this outside the United States, I'm going to take a moment so you can all scream at me that it's actually called football. Ready? Okay, go ahead. Get that out of your system? Alright, let's move on. 3D Groove had a habit of inserting 3D into all of its titles. I guess it was very important that we all knew going in that we'd be playing a 3D game. So the music from the show kicks it off, get it? Kicks? Soccer? And if you check out the instructions, you'll be surprised to see how overly complicated they make this really basic game out to be. Did they really need to define every arrow key individually? They assume you know what left and right are, so why do they need to tell you left moves left and right moves right? When you actually start, you have four different game modes to choose from. Even though that's more than what I was expecting, they're all really straightforward. Let's start with score a goal. Dora explains the rules, then you have to move to the number she calls out and shoot a ball into a goal while Swiper is the goalie. She only ever calls the numbers in numeric order, so it's easy as long as you can recognize numbers. Even if you've played around and beaten it, whenever you start it up again, you can't start moving until Dora finishes her opening spiel. It can get a little annoying. Once you win, she sings the We Did It song from the show and confetti rains on you. I can't say I advocate the use of confetti outside, but at least they got the song in there somewhere. It's kind of funny to watch her bounce up and down while she talks to you after the song ends. We did it! We ran to all the numbers! And we scored all the goals! The next mode is called Pass and Score. This time, Boots is here and you have to pass the ball to him whenever you move to a number. It's basically the same premise as the other mode, just with Boots this time. We ran to all the numbers! We even passed the ball to Boots and scored a goal! Hooray, we... passed the ball to Boots. Yippee! The last two modes are practice mode and soccer challenge. In practice mode, you just run to the numbers as she calls them out. Soccer challenge is all three modes in a row. That wraps up what might have been the most intense sports game I've ever played. I think we've learned a lot. Next time you miss the World Cup, just play this instead for basically the same experience. To be serious, this game is obviously intended for really young children. AKA the ones that probably watch Dora the Explorer. I guess it's got me there. So let's check out a more involved 3D Groove Dora game, Dora's Driving Adventure. Uh, should there be sound, or...? Nope, you get dead silence. Music was out of the budget for this one. Look! It's Val the Octopus in her mail truck! Well, at least the voices weren't. So Dora and Tico are in a car, and the mailwoman Val the Octopus is dropping packages out of her truck. Oh no! The packages are falling out! Will you help us pick up the packages and return them to the mail truck? No. That'll show her. So let's get on with the gameplay. Whoa, what? What? <laughs> what? What? What's going on? What is happening? I'm not joking. This is what happens when you simply tap the arrow keys. You move at lightning speed. 
I keep missing the packages and it's really hard to turn around and go back for them. Swiper shows up to steal packages every now and again, but sometimes you just have to let him swipe because you'll be moving so fast that turning around is out of the question. That aside, I can't say this game isn't amusing. I had a good laugh playing this one. No wonder she tells you to wear a seatbelt so you can be safe, otherwise you'd be sent flying into the stratosphere. You can also pick up these gasoline canisters and make you so fast that you- Sorry, I think I just shattered the sound barrier. Don't pick up the gas cans. But, what if we were to use the arrow keys on the screen rather than the ones on the keyboard? <laughs> I'm not even joking. Since you move faster than the speed of light with the keyboard, I can only assume this is what you're supposed to do. This is how the game wants you to play it. Imagine playing the whole game like this. I tried, but I gave up and went back to using the keyboard. This is hilarious. I can't even say it's bad. I'm enjoying myself too much. Also, backpack and map are in the corner, but you can't click on them or anything. They're just there to remind you they exist. But backpack does have some significance in this next one. It's called 3D Backpack Adventure. I'll let the opening cutscene explain the premise for me. Backpack and I are returning these books to the library. Wanna come? Let's go, vamanos! Oh no! Swiper swiped all the books! Can you help us get them back? No! Great! I said Let's no, you moron! Looking. So this one's a typical platformer where you take control of Dora and go to collect library books that Swiper stole. Come on, Dora, take the plunge. Ugh, the water's just there for show. If you get too close to Swiper before he steals a book, Dora says Swiper no swiping and sends him away. When you win, Dora makes you sit there and watch her count all the books you just collected. The mode select screen literally tells you how many you have to collect, so this is completely meaningless. I know it was a big thing in the show, but still. Then the game ends with this picture of Dora making a very strange face. What's wrong with her eyes? You'll see this in your darkest of nightmares. I should mention that after I beat this game, it refused to close or tab out before it completely crashed, so I can't say I recommend it. This was the last thing I saw before facing total destruction. Never trust that face. Like with 3D Soccer, I don't expect anyone out of preschool to enjoy this game very much. It's super basic and there really isn't much to it. You just kind of walk and pick things up. But the next one seems like it had a little more thought put into it. Dora's 3D Pyramid Adventure sends you into a pyramid so you can locate the Lost City. This was based on an episode from Season 2, but it's often debated and many consider it part of Season 3 because it contains elements from Season 3 even though it aired in Season 2. This was back when Explorer Stars were first introduced, remember those? Honestly, I don't. That was one aspect of Dora I completely forgot about until now. For those who don't know, the Explorer Stars were a gimmick throughout Season 3 and some episodes of Season 4 where Dora and Boots would collect differently themed stars every episode. It was likely an attempt from the writers to keep the show fresh, but they eventually retired the concept in Season 5. They don't actually appear in this game, I just wanted to explain that. So this blue screen character called screen, is guiding you through the number pyramid so you can find the key to the lost city. So you only really need the arrow keys for this one. Pressing up makes you jump, so you can just jump through the whole opening jumping segment. Aw, what do you mean I can't fall into the abyss? No stakes in this perilous quest for... <laughs> Dora Croft. <laughs> Try again, friend! Oh, now that's more like it. In the first segment, you just kinda jump till you reach the end. Then you look at this weird expression Dora makes as the elevator takes her up. At least this one doesn't crash my computer. Then you swing on vines with the same controls. Like with the other games, this one is about counting and Dora counts everything she does out loud. Four! Five! Really hammering those numbers into our heads, we're gonna be counting to a hundred before we know it. Legend has it that after ten comes eleven. In the last stage, Screen calls a color out and you jump to it. Then Dora says the name in Spanish, which is a nice touch. It would have been nice to have something like that in the other games. After all, the show was known for teaching a lot of Spanish words. It would have been good to see more of that reflected in these games. But I guess the budget didn't allow for it. So that about does it for the Dora games, but there's still one more we need to check out. This isn't entirely a Dora game, but it's based on a spin-off of Dora called Go Diego Go. This was a show that followed Dora's cousin Diego as he embarked on animal rescue missions. I have a funny story relating to this, actually. 
When I was in elementary school, the other students and I were at this big assembly and someone was passing around a paper that asked every student what their favorite show was. We had to leave a tally next to our favorite cartoon. For some reason, Go Diego Go was winning by a massive margin. I ended up voting it just because everyone was watching me and I felt like I had to so I wouldn't stand out. To be honest, I had only ever seen one or two episodes from the show. I didn't really care for it and I've never really met anyone who especially liked it. I'm sure it's not a bad show, but I never really heard anyone talk about it and it just kind of faded from existence one day. Why did it have so many votes? So looking at this game, it's easy to see that it has far more time and effort put into it than any of the ones before it. It seems they cared a little more about making this one a legitimate game with different features and new things to discover. I guess my classmates that voted Go Diego Go developed it. That being said, it's kinda bad. Let's get to it. At the start, we're once again given needlessly complicated instructions, then we're given a choice between two stages. There's the rainforest, Diego's usual location, and the South Pole. Let's start with the rainforest. You can play on easy or hard mode, but they're significantly different. Regardless, the first person to introduce you to the game is Dora instead of Diego. See, I included it with the Dora games for a reason. This is my cousin Diego. Hola. Want to help him rescue the animals? Great. First, we listen for animal sounds. Then we look for the animal. When we find it, we'll give the animal food, water, or a bandage. Remember to eat snacks for energy. So you have to go around finding animals to help them. You can eat fruits for energy, as Dora calls it, but I don't think they really do anything. I haven't noticed any sort of difference they make to the gameplay. Yum 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 yum, delicioso. You're Diego, and you're walking around the rainforest and listening for sounds that come from an animal in need. First up is Baby Jaguar from the show. Oh, sorry, a uh, Baby Jaguar. The sounds get louder as you grow closer to it, but you really just have to keep moving forward with occasional stops to look around. Now here's the big difference between easy and hard mode. On easy mode, there is no conflict whatsoever. You just walk through the stage until you find the animal. Obviously, there isn't any fun in that, so you really have no choice but to play on hard if you want the actual game. You can either use the keyboard or the on-screen keys, but listen to me right now. Don't you dare use the on-screen keys, you hear me? I need you to understand that you cannot use the keys on the screen to make Diego move. Just pretend they aren't there. The reason I stress this so much is because the platform sections of this game can get incredibly frustrating even with the keyboard. This game has the exact same problem as SpongeBob Saves the Krusty Krab, which I reviewed a while back. The controls are stiff and keep you locked going one way, so changing direction is not a comfortable procedure. When you jump, you're stuck in the direction you choose to jump in because you won't be able to properly adjust yourself mid-air. So when you're trying to jump to platforms that are constantly moving out of your reach, it's so much easier to miss them than it would be in a game with decent jump controls. Again, I give this game the same criticism I gave Spongebob Saves the Krusty Krab. Why make a platform jumper if you aren't going to have the controls to accommodate a platform jumper? Plus, the game is filled with moments like this. The whole time, Dora is constantly reminding you to listen for the sounds. It can feel extremely condescending while you're trying to make an impossible jump. Listen for the sounds! I at least appreciate the design and how there's something to see almost everywhere you look. You can even try to climb up the sides of the map, but you'll often just slide back down. So I actually got stuck before I could even find Baby Jaguar. You have to keep your eyes peeled looking in all directions to find these animals. Some of them can seem really hidden, but when you find them, you'll wonder how you didn't notice them before. Once you reach an animal, you have to decide if it wants food, water, or a bandage. Normally, I'd complain that nothing in the game tells you what you need to select for them, but it really doesn't matter if you get it wrong. You can just keep clicking until you choose the right option. Then you get to do all that two more times with even harder obstacles. Really makes you wish you played on easy. Opening your journal gives you descriptions about all the animals, but none of it is essential to the game itself. But I guess it counts as educational to some degree. Hooray, we're smarter! 
The second animal you need to find is a taper, and boy is this one a real pain in the backpack. I searched the entire map, doing a few extremely painful platform sections, made it all the way to a dead end, went backwards through the platform puzzles, realized I was going the wrong way, went back through the platform sections all over again, realized that I was actually going the wrong way that time and had to go backwards through a few platform puzzles, and I eventually found this wretched thing after being subjected to an endless series of jumping and missing my mark. 3D Groove, why would you do this? The last animal is a bear, which is fine, I guess. You go through this massive platform section again and then you win. But wait, there's more! We still have to do the South Pole! The fun never ends, does it? So the only animals you can encounter here are penguins, and the environment is less interesting than the rainforest, but it's still nice to have another stage. Believe it or not, though, the platforms can be even less forgiving here. There are a few instances where if you miss one jump, you have to go all the way back and start the series of jumps all over again. Also, I should mention that if you jump beneath a rising platform, your head actually pushes the platform up. Diego must have a head of steel or something. And people say my head is hard. Whoa. Yeah, you just saw that. I skipped over half the map by jumping over this ice wall. But look at this. How can I not jump there from here? How am I supposed to be educated by a game that can't even follow logic? So once you give all the penguins fish, you beat the game. Yippee. And that concludes Diego's Rescue Adventure 3D. What do we think about this one? Your yields did not meet the goal. I respect that they tried to do something more ambitious with this than they did with any of the Dora games, but it needed work. Maybe a medium mode would have split the difference between no conflict whatsoever easy mode and maximum frustration hard mode. At the same time, it's easier to be critical with this than the other Dora games because it has more substance and therefore more stuff to talk about. And at least this one didn't crash my computer. Still, the concept is neat. If you were one of the kids who voted Go Diego Go in my school, you might enjoy playing as him and doing what he does best, helping animals. I can commend the game for being a decent display of what the show was about, but I still wouldn't call it a masterpiece or one I'd willingly play again. The same can be said for all of these games. Maybe they work as time killers, but with how many accessible games that were out at the time and especially nowadays, all of these would lose their amusement value to a child very quickly. So if you'll excuse me, I think it's time I go Diego go find another game. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.